These are fire ants, a venomous species of ant native to the UK. And if you annoy them, they will sting you. Ow! Okay, yeah, that stung me a lot. After saving this colony from almost certain death, I built them their own Lego ant match. With multiple rooms, working lights, and even a garden for them to enjoy. But this is no ordinary fire ant colony. These girls were found living in possibly the craziest place you can imagine. And they are not afraid to defend themselves. Once they're settled into their new home, I'm going to see what happens if I put my hand right into the middle of their nest. But before we get into all of that, let's go back to the beginning. It all started on a warm day during the Easter holidays, where my son and I were exploring the field behind our house. We flipped over a piece of wood to find this nest of fire ants. The next day, my son was eager to show his sister and her friend what we'd found, and I agreed to let them go into the field for five minutes. I did not expect what happened next. Wait, let me see. This one's filled with fire ants. My son had come back home carrying a holiday animal bone filled to the brim with fire ants. Of course, I asked him, Where did you find the bone full of fire ants? I found it on the floor. Bruh. Now I have no idea what animal these belong to or why they were even in the field, but my son now knows not to pick up random bones. So now I had a bone full of angry venomous ants on my doorstep and the kids wanted to know if we could keep them. So, like most parents would, I said, Absolutely not. Okay, I'm not like most parents. And I actually had the perfect place to keep. That's because last year I built this. Yes, I know, it looks like a crappy attempt at building a Lego house. But this particular Lego house is actually a purpose-built Lego ant farm mansion. And this is where they are going to live. Spanning over three floors with a kitchen, lounge area and a bedroom, equipped with kitchen appliances, a guitar, and a seedy red light. It was completely sealed other than a removable lid held in place by magnets and a small hole in the bottom which would allow me to hydrate the nest. I originally built this for my colony of black garden ants. They're still living in this test tube and they'll be too small for a nest this size for quite a while. Anyway, back to the fire ants. You might be thinking, well, why didn't you just leave them to live in their bone in the farmer's field? And that's because I knew any day now the farmer was going to spray the field. And surely enough, two days later, he did just that. And whatever he sprayed did this to grass in less than two weeks. So I'm not sure how well the fire ants would be doing right now. Now the first thing to do was to get the ants out of the bone and into a container. After shaking them into this jug, I realised just how many ants were living in this thing. You could see several queens, which were the larger ants like this one. And these fire ants are what's known as polygynous, which means they can have multiple egg laying queens in one colony. So now I was kind of freaking out that there were so many, so I quickly tipped them into some sealable jars to store them while I finished prepping their Lego mansion. With the nest fully sealed, it was time for them to move in. Okay, so now they're going crazy. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Oh gosh. Max. Yeah, Max, go, 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 pour him in. Oh, this was no easy task, and ants were getting absolutely everywhere. So I collected as many strays as I could using a paintbrush. And after tipping in the second load, I decided I'd add the rest at a later date. During the move into the nest, I decided I would find out exactly why they are nicknamed fire ants and held this worker in place until she stung me. No, this is not her twerking on my hand. This is actually how they sting. Ow! Okay, yeah, that stung me a lot. It kind of felt like multiple nettle stings at once, and it wasn't even too bad. It resulted in a small red lump appearing, which occasionally itched, and this stuck around for a few weeks and didn't bother me at all. Hmm... I wonder what it would feel like to put my hand in the nest. So now the majority of the colony was in, and it was carnage. The ants were running around the whole nest like crazy. 
I hoped that they would settle into the bedroom, so I covered the front with a sheet of red acetate. As ants don't see red light, this would just make it appear dark for them, and the red LED inside would help me see them without disturbing them too much. But, of course, they didn't care that I'd made the bedroom more cosy for them. They were used to living in a femur. So they decided to settle into the kitchen, more specifically, the Lego oven. The bedroom obviously wasn't ideal enough for them, and I'd probably focus too much on how it looked rather than what the ants need. This species in particular liked it to be quite humid, and the pool of water underneath just wasn't providing enough humidity. So I tidied up the kitchen as much as I could, and filled up their bin with some damp soil to see whether they would use it to build their own nest. They seemed to like it, and I kept seeing workers go into the bin, but the colony just stayed in the oven. So then I decided to make an add-on to their Lego mansion and build them a more natural setting. I filled an old plastic jar with cocoa fibre, added a small plant, a rock and some dead wood for hiding under, and connected it to the kitchen with some airline tubing. I also added this middle section full of sand in case I wanted to add any further sections to the nest later on. And it didn't take long for the ants to find the tubes and start to explore. And soon after that they were digging tunnels in the soil. The next day most of the ants had left the oven and moved into the new garden area and settled underneath the piece of wood. When I went to enter the soil bin I didn't realise there were this many hiding inside. Oh no there's a nest in there! Oh dear! A few of the ants seemed to still be hanging around in the bedroom and I hadn't fully given up on it being a good nest. So I decided to do some remodelling on the basement. I decided to use some aerated concrete as it's a good material for retaining moisture. So I cut it to the size of the room and carved out tunnels for the ants. I added a larger hole in the bottom for the water bowl to sit underneath which will also help raise the humidity. And lastly, I added a small hole that I can fit this pipette into and spray water directly onto the concrete block. A few stragglers had managed to escape during the redesign, but I collected up any I could find and dropped them back in. Now, remember the ants I'd left sealed in the jars? It was time for them to move into the nest. I'd added a test tube which I'd covered in foil to make it darker into the jar, which worked great at collecting as many ants as possible. All I had to do was scoop it out and then drop it into the nest. So now all the ants were in, it was time to give them a much deserved meal. Half a mealworm and a puddle full of sugar water was just what they needed. The workers took it in turns, sucking out the insides of the Moria worm and taking it into the nest to feed the larvae. I didn't risk putting in a whole Moria worm because these guys pack quite the box. Now they were all fed, it was time to check exactly how the nest was coming along. As I couldn't really see them in the garden nest, I had no idea how they were actually doing. So I lifted up the wood and got a great surprise. The nest was looking good and I could see plenty of larvae in there. But that wasn't the only nest. The ants had also moved into the bedroom nest. Not only can these fire ants have multiple queens in their colonies, you can actually cover large areas and have several different nests. <coughs> the nest we found under the log in the field was probably part of the same colony as these bone dwellers. In fact, my son and I went back and tried to save a few of these guys also, and they're living in this test tube. I might investigate and try to see if they're all one happy colony in the future. The last thing I needed was to add some of the super soil from my terrarium. This terrarium is packed full of springtails and other microorganisms, which will help keep the garden nest free from mold. Finally it was all completed and the ants seemed to have settled into their nest. It was time to leave them to do their thing and see how quickly the colony grows until they will eventually move 
Okay, genau. Now being over a month since my son came home with a bone colony and things are doing great. They're still using two nest areas and I can see some juicy larvae in the bedroom. Though I expect some more workers soon. I can't wait to see how this colony progresses and grows and provide updates along the way. But now there's just one thing left for me to do. It's time to find out what happens when I put my hand right into the middle of the nest. So here goes. Okay, come on guys, I've built this whole video up to this point and you're just not going to sting me. Had around 10 workers running around on my hand with their jaws open, and none of them would sting me. After a few minutes, I started to brush them off and one of them finally got me. And she got me good. This one felt nothing like the first sting. It actually hurt quite a bit. Ow! Within two minutes, my whole finger was burning and I could feel it radiating into my hand. Then just my little finger started to sweat which was weird oh it's actually throbbing i'm so glad it was just the one that stung me and not all 10 of them anyway i think i'll be okay <laughs>